hey, it's John Reed, johnnyrp.com. In usual tradition, I've taken over a <laughs> forbidden hotel room that I'm not supposed <laughs> to be in. We kind of got permission this time, though. Yeah, that's I got, right. I'm joined with Julian Delvat. How are you doing? Hey, hey nice, nice being here. We're talking controlling 2012 and a little bit about what happened the last couple of days as part of a team that put on a controlling conference for the first time. So this was kind of the first time that we put a bunch of SAP controllers in the room. Yeah, you never know what, what you had then. You didn't know what was going to happen, right, where they were going to, like, kill each other. or They seemed to get along. That's right. Um, but so I think with all this talk about, like, HANA and mobile and cloud, sometimes people look, lose track of what customers are really dealing with on the ground. Yeah, I think we heard a lot about that this week, didn't we? That's right, yeah. I mean, technically, day in, day out, those guys are not doing fancy stuff. They're making sure the orders are processed correctly, making sure the numbers tie up correctly. So that's really the hardcore part of those guys, trying to make sure everything runs smoothly, right? So so that was, uh, it's back, back to core, I would say. Yeah, and controlling sort of interesting, right, because Controlling, if you understand it right, within SAP can really help you to derive more value. That's what right. I was surprised to see is there's still a lot of folks here that are just coming to understand what it is they can do with basically software they've already paid for. That's a, that's yeah. always very uh, very challenging. And and when I started SAP, I I figured out after a year as a developer inside SAP, you just start to realize the the size of it. And, um, and it was very interesting to see the, some of the guys had, had questions about BPC because they just, they just had it. And it's very, what they were sold to use for and how mm. they were, want, wanted to use it was very different. So, um, yeah, that's very interesting how you could leverage every single piece of the tool and, and how different companies are using it very differently. You talked to a bunch of customers. What were your takeaways? Uh, I think it's um, that particular conference. First, it's it's a sizable uh, conference. That means I, I could literally go through every single guy. I had at the end, we had a little game trying to meet out with as many people as possible. You actually won, by I the won, way. I won, yeah. I got like 52 <laughs> names. And Congratulations. <laughs> That's right. But no, but I, I mean, we are usually taking care of the uh, ASA conference trying to make sure that the controlling content is interesting, but it's very hard because you're dragged here and there, and it's the same if you go SAP Financials or SAP PLM. Those are thousands of people, so you literally connect to one or two or maybe five if right. you're really good at it. Here, everybody is interesting in the same topic, yes. uh, and that's that's making conversation, conversations which, a lot better. Which allowed you to get a gut check, and what was that gut check? What did you learn, ultimately? <clears throat> I think what was very interesting is to see that uh, the level of maturity is very different between customers. Some uh, are really just starting, and a good example was the COPA discussions we had. So some some are just literally starting with it, even though they had the software mm -hmm. for five, ten years. And the other ones that were at the end of the curve, they literally used every every, every trick in the book <laughs> and used uh, every potential way to optimize it. So the level is very different. The other interesting thing about controlling <coughs> is it's almost in a way like the revenge of the controllers because <laughs> because controlling was starting to feel maybe perception was anyway oh that's kind of old school and blah but now with the emergence of hana and its connection to controlling it's getting kind of interesting again what's your take on on hana and its relationship with controlling and that's very and interesting stuff. yeah um and, and you're right i mean you've been doing a lot of work on the career side and fico for, for the last two, three, five years were not as sexy as, right. uh, as, as CRM, APO, and, and those things. But really now with the emergence of the COPA accelerator, that was the first application on HANA, was the COPA accelerator. And now uh, I'm working with SAP on the net margin analysis, which is like a fancy, sexy, but operational and, and, and making decisions with controlling information. So now controlling becomes, again, where it was supposed to be, which is like the center of transactions and making sure everything runs smoothly and you're, you're driving value to the business. And unless you're, you have visibility on your business, there's, there's no way you can improve it, right? Yeah. You know, it was interesting because around the HANA topic, we we did a poll, basically, of the whole room, and pretty much everyone had heard of HANA. Right. So SAP marketing had been successful there. <laughs> but but there wasn't a lot of clarity about what, what you can do with it. And I think one thing that really interested me was 
I think people enjoyed hearing SAP's take on HANA here because our SAP speakers, uh, Janet and Carson, right. they did a nice job of not overselling. That's right, and um, I think that was that was great. We had uh, the chance to have uh, Janet Salmon uh, from Germany. She's on the development side. And, all the way and, from Waldorf, yeah. Oh, yeah, all the way. Yep. She had a terrible flight. <laughs> and, yeah. and, and Carsten Hilker, who is on the solution management side, I mean, gathering requirements. So these guys are not selling anything. They're just right. here to hear the complaints, and they got a lot of them. <laughs> so every yeah, time they did. they did a lot of it. I mean, that was great. We were really lucky to have them and, um, and bring their value on it, yeah. And the interesting thing is there weren't any live customers on HANA, but there was at least one proof of concept customer in the group. That and, was very and, interesting. And was able to share some experiences, including like <coughs> the fact that while the reporting had gotten faster in their proof of concept, some of the transactions had gotten slower. And, and that's so right, yeah. They you know, just brought up issues around you know, what you can do with it that I think help people to understand the pros and cons a little better. Well, that's know. always the problem between marketing and reality. Uh, right. and, and, and that was, well, I think he was not really... Um, could not talk as much as he wanted to. I think there was some NDA going right. on in there, but it was very interesting to see, hey, well, it's, that's not a magic wand. So, yeah. yes, he's delivering the promise on those five or ten reports, but on those five other ones, well, it's not really better. Um, yeah. So, and, and then Janet, from the development perspective, said, yeah, we realized this, right. but just because they were so optimized right. with the f initial shortcomings that it has to go through all those hoops now and yeah. it's, it's taking more time so it's it's great to to get that feedback yeah yeah he he shared some good stuff it was funny though because he pulled him out in the break talk to them and he's definitely a little careful you could tell that there was something going on when i found out it was nda i wasn't yeah. surprised you know it's interesting i think sap does have an uphill battle though um you and i talked a little bit in the last video we shot around um that the, like the net margin analysis on top of COPA accelerator gets more interesting in some ways because right. then it's not just about speed, it's about creating an app. That's right, like, it's a real app. There's, <laughs> accelerator doesn't really have a UI necessarily. And, <laughs> That's right. Yeah. You, know, you need something that people can use. A yeah. business application, mm -hmm. um, I think that would maybe be a little more persuasive to users here if they could see something like that and try it out for themselves, don't you? That, no, no, definitely. Uh, and I think the analogy is more like a, if you're buying a truck and, and you're just putting a, a turbo on it, well, that's great, but if I have not a hook at the end and I cannot right. pull anything, that's that's useless. Yeah. So so now we're gradually having the foundations done. I think the HANA is is now stable enough. Uh, the language uh, for the developers is is mature in a way, so they're still working on that. But now they have we have the Copa accelerator, which is a faster engine. But it's if if as you said, if you're just going through the wall, it's not it's not helpful. But now we start to have those applications like net margin analysis where you have dashboards, you have call to actions, what if analysis, all those things that were just not technically feasible in the ECC environment. It's now all integrated and it's you can make decisions out of your numbers. And that's the key to it. Now we're starting to see apps that are really valuable and, and, and make a lot of difference. Yeah, I think the challenge SAP is going to have is to figure out, because I think customers did want to learn more and they were open to it, the ones that were here. Mm -hmm. But But I think there was also, they didn't want to feel like SAP had forgotten their other challenges. That's right, and you know, it's, because, it's very difficult. Because, yeah. you know, for example, I'll just give you, like, one of the ones I heard, you probably heard it too, was we just put BPC in and we're trying to figure that out. And now, <laughs> that's right, that's a big And now one you're already. talking about some some other thing we might be able to use. So, <laughs> and, yeah. and that's right, and, and I think also... Um, you have different people, you have business analysts, you have an IT crowd, and we did not get a lot of the C-level. Uh, we would be more interested in, in looking at the vision to, okay, in two, three, five years, this is, okay, this is the application we want to have there. While we're still working on those, I cannot run transaction KP26N. Right, <laughs> right. Now, I made a provocative statement in my semi-keynote. I only spoke <laughs> for a few minutes, but, uh, but I, what I said was that I think better networked um, customers uh, have better implementations. That's right. Um, and that's just based on my anecdotal experience. I've never read a study on this, but going to a lot of user group meetings, including a lot of ASIC stuff, and also this conference control in 2012 and seeing the way customers are connecting. And to me, this is my opinion, that I just think when you go to these events and you get involved, I just think it helps you. I, I walked into a room 
uh, kind of a solution session with just seven customers walking around talking to each other. This works, this doesn't. I'm thinking to myself, these people are saving thousands of dollars in consulting costs. That's right. Right here, because they're just getting this much more savvy ability and, and, and the understanding of not going down the wrong road because you've heard from your peers. That's so right. So what is your take? I mean, it's a little controversial to say that. <laughs> no, no, it is. And, and, and we were talking about this as well. That some people just want to download the slides, and but that's not even 20% of the value of the conference. Uh, right. The real value is in the networking. And, and, and I have three very critical uh, examples here. Uh, there are three companies in the San Diego area, so it was very easy for them to come, that have VPC challenges. So just sit down together and see how these other guys are doing it. And, and there's, uh, there are three companies that are literally down the road in Milwaukee, completely different industries, so they are not competing, and they have the exact same challenge over intern company charging and everything. So these guys now start talking, and, and they want to come to my office, let me show you what I have, and then come to the other office and try to improve that. And, and, and another lady was really uh, eager to, to, to make, solve one of the problems, which is like the backlog, and it's pretty technical. But uh, So now there's a uh, kind of a, a, a group around her trying to get to solve that damn problem of backlog. So, so it's really, uh, the real value is not in just the presentation. It's all about, okay, we're interested in that topic. We feel the pain. Oh, you already went through it. Right. Yeah, and, and, and she was like, yeah, don't do that. No, no, don't do that. <laughs> yeah. So that's, uh, that was really, really interesting. And there was a, it's, it's you know, again, the size isn't, is small enough that the discussions were really going on really uh, great. Yeah, and I don't want to bash conventional training. You know, sometimes it makes sense to get a week intensive training. But, you know, what I'm really impressed by these days is this idea of network learning where you build relationships with a bunch of people that share your specialization, whether it's right. controlling or anything else. Anything else, yeah. And, and you, you emerge from that, and you have that year-round. Yeah. Because you never know when problems are going to come up, and that's where it's very powerful. That's right. You know? and, and, and I think that's, that's what you tried also to, to influence here is a lot of people are searching for a solution to their own problem. Right. right? So you usually Google it, or you go right. to the ASOC, and it, but it's also about well, giving, which right. is... Well, we've been through this, and right. this is our takeaways. Yeah, absolutely. That's <coughs> the basis of community, right? Is That's right. Go both ways. So uh, I guess you and I both have some ridiculous uh, flights <laughs> That's right. ahead, yeah. and we're, we've got to give up this room we took over. So thanks the for joining room. me. It was uh, fun to hash this out. That's a wrap from San Diego.